Have you noticed that Zoom released the Zoom M2, M3 and M4 32-bit float microphone recorders? I think what we would have wanted, at least me, is the Zoom M1. And for the impatient ones, think of the Zoom M2 as an H1N but with 32-bit float. The M3 would be something like a DTT3 Pro microphone for the top of your camera but has an integrated 32-bit float recorder and think of the M4 as something like the Zoom H4 or Zoom H5 that has extra XLRs and it's also a 32-bit float recorder. So for me what's missing is the Zoom M1 that ideally would be something like the DJI Mic. And today we're going to be playing Product Manager and let's design how this thing should be. And since we're going to be playing as a product manager today, let's start by taking a look at these other products. The Zoom M2 and the M3, we're going to be retailing for about $200, and I expect that's going to translate to 200 and something euros. The M4 is going to be retailing at $300, which I suppose is going to be 330 to 340 euros. One thing to keep in mind of the M3, and I'm showing this, but you know what I mean, is that once you will plug the M3 into the camera, that will not be recording 32-bit float audio into the camera. It's going to give the microphone signal so that you can record this and good sound into the camera, but you will probably want it for syncing purposes, but it's going to be recording inside of the M3 itself. And our M1 is going to be very, very similar to DJI's DJI mic. We're talking here about having transmitters, which are small, tiny, with definitely a very similar magnetic clip. They have integrated microphone and also you have a possibility of plugging any microphone to it, be a 3.5mm jack, and it will record internally 32-bit float audio. It's going to have a USB-C port on the side. And within this port, you can download the files onto your computer, but you can also charge the units. Why not having a charging case? We're going to have both. The receiver is going to be something quite similar to the DJI because it's just great, other than the somewhat flimsy hot shoe, cold shoe um, mount in here. It's going to be sturdier than this. And the menus will be a little bit simpler because you don't need gain. I haven't mentioned it yet, but the point of 32 bit float audio is that you can totally forget about the gain. As long as you have the microphone placed decently, like right now we have this tip on EM700 at about 30 centimeters from me, if you do not clip the microphone, and I don't mean the preamps, but the microphone itself, and you would need to be really, really loud, and here we're talking about motorbike type of loud, you're never going to be clipping it. And 32-bit float audio is going to let you set the levels however you want, in post without adding any noise. Because of that, you will not need to set the gain. However, why to have a receiver if to plug this thing into the camera if it will not give 32-bit float audio? Just for convenience, it's gonna be easier to synchronize and maybe in some cases for a really super quick turnaround, you're okay with the preamps of your camera, so you will be using this thing. Now, one of the things that I really like from the DJI mic is the magnetic mount and many times I use it just like this mounted in my chest and I use it as a standalone recorder I like it really much for vlogging purposes because I put this it doesn't matter if I'm wearing a t-shirt in the summer or a very thick jacket in the winter I can always place this thing wherever I want if I would be using only the clip the microphone might be twisted tilted sometimes these microphones when you place them here in the in the seam of the t-shirt or the neck of the t-shirt sometimes they move and wobble a little bit and they point to different places this design is fantastic for me and as i said sometimes when vlogging which i often do with action cameras or 360 cameras or even with the a7 IV, i use this as a standalone recorder because it's good it's practical and there's less moving pieces to worry about so our zoom m1 will definitely be a standalone recorder and because this is so practical, we will sell this thing separately on its own, and that's why in the internal battery can be charged via USB-C. Now let me take a look, and I'm going to keep this one here for dramatic effect. Zoom, we want something like this with 32-bit load audio, please. The pricing model will be as follows. The whole package, which would include 
something similar to this, meaning two transmitters and internal recorders with 32-bit float audio. The charging box, the receiver, and by the way, everything syncs automatically by putting it in the box and closing it. That package would cost about $350, maybe 300 to 60, 370 euros. That puts it just above the DJ mic and you have everything we love from it plus 32-bit float audio. What if we want the single elements? This one alone would be $125, so about 140 euros, which puts it which puts it in a price category on its own. And for, for people like me that we're going to be using most of the time just one of them and without the receiver, this would be a great option at a great price. Then, of course, we need to be offering the possibility to buy the charging case with the receiver, and that would be 150 bucks. The point is that if you buy the three things separately, it would cost a little bit more, so the price of the full combo is kind of attractive. So what are the use cases? Well, if you're mostly going to be vlogging or using this as a standalone recorder, just get the transmitter. If you're going to be doing interviews like the one that I did with Peter Forsgaard, which I was using the DJI microphone on the both of us, then get the full combo. And if you want the charging case, you want the receiver because you're going to be plugging into your camera, but you really don't need the other transmitter, then just get one receiver, one transmitter, and you're good to go. Now, doesn't the Zoom F2 almost do all of this? Um, well, kind of. First, you need a lavalier microphone plugged into it, which means that you can put the, micro the lavalier wherever you want, but you won't have a cable. I'm always worried that the battery door will just pop, because it just does. So I'm hoping for something built in a better quality. I do not distrust Zoom when it comes to build quality. It just they did a poor job with the Zoom F2. They have been doing a great job with absolutely everything else. Additionally, if you would need to record into the camera as well, you cannot do that with the Zoom F2 unless it's next to the camera, but then it's not next to you. The next question is, well, what is wrong with the DJ mic? Uh, nothing is wrong with it. It's pretty much perfect. I have some suggestions. First of all, of course, a 32-bit float audio. If we get that, that would be fantastic. Then this case, it's great and it's very compact, but I wouldn't mind if it would be a little bit bigger and we could fit the windshields on the case itself. Now, if I have this case with the things inside, I need to carry the windshields and the cable separately. Also, the cable that came with it, it had just flat ends, which means that it was on. if it was on top of the camera, I could not really plug it into the side. So I ended up using a cable similar to this one. Better cable out of the box, and if we could fit the windshields and the cable in the same charging box, and 30 to float audio, the Zoom M1 would be absolutely perfect. So why bother asking for a Zoom M1 and not asking for a DJI Mic 2? Uh, mostly the price. Since we have appointed ourselves as the product managers for the Zoom M1, we did price it however we wanted, and we did price it to compete with the DJI Mic, this version. If DJI comes up with a second version, it's going to be likely significantly more expensive, and therefore the Zoom M1 would be more attractive from that standpoint. And again, since we have self-appointed ourselves as product managers, we could do that. So now, my question for you, would you buy one of, not this, but Zoom M1 with the specifications that we just discussed, and which configuration would you buy? And the last question would be, are you a user of 32-bit float audio? And if so, which device are you using and are you happy with it? And I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. And we're going to see you soon for some more content.